Okay, I didn't hear the one, but we're starting the show. That's okay. I should have expected it. They never say it in when the rockets take off. From that's uh, true. It's because you're so excited, you forget to say the one. You don't need the one. You're already up in the air a little bit. Oh, so that's and we already are up in the we're air. We're up in the air, boy. Are we ever <laughs> up in the air today? Uh, welcome to Liquid Lunch. It's me, Hugh, and Sandra, of course. Hello. And uh, we've got uh, Chris behind the uh, board today, and uh, we're just. Uh, doing the best we can today which is awesome chris is doing a phenomenal job so we better get busy because we have uh some great guests coming we on do. the show and we uh, do. and we're gonna get busy with them we've got uh, carolyn uh, is it Faye from montreal they came in from montreal All they're here the for the montreal um, wow, that would be a long drive yeah is it blues collective is that That's your it. your group right or ah, exactly she's in town Faye the maple blues, blues awards collective. are this weekend and she's uh, in town, and uh, wow. we're going to be talking to her about her music and about the awards. awards. Very and, cool. Uh, looking forward to that. She's a cheery, cheery <clears> lady. <throat> Can you how she loves what she does? And she's having fun. She told me she's having fun. Yes. <laughs> and also, we've got uh, Bruce Graham coming in, Canada's singing DJ. Oh. Imagine a DJ who Bruce sings. Wow. It sort of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? It. It can defeat the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> or it could add on, Aaron. It could add on to You're the purpose. You're such an optimist. That's what I love about you. <laughs> well, it's actually what you do too, right? You add on in your profession. Okay, wait. We're going to get to Aaron in just a sec. But the okay, that was a bit of a tease. Oh, Canada Singing DJ is here in the building. Yay. So we're going to find out what that's all about a little bit later. But we're going to start to show off. Uh, we've got Aaron Grinhouse uh, joining us here. And Aaron, Hello. this is... Your second time on the show, right? Yes. You were here a couple of years ago. A or? few years ago, yeah. 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 So were you doing the same thing a few years ago? Yeah, but I wasn't specializing quite as much as okay. I am now. Okay. Okay. I think he looks younger than what I remember. Well, I was going to say, I can't even believe you were here a few years ago because were you just out of high school or what? No, he looked older before. Oh, wow. You think so? I seriously I got a lot more gray hair here I don't see top. any you don't you don't see any <laughs> thank you for flattering me <laughs> so we'll see what the video reveals after yeah we'll do an instant replay okay well, you know if you do like Hugh where you cut off the top of the head because that's what he does oh is that what happened to the top of his head oh, oh, I wonder oh. why you that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one Aaron so, so if the lawyer thing doesn't work out you can always consider a career in stand-up comedy <laughs> which is also my backup plan Okay, you know what? What? Stick to liquid lunch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But, but we're it, having fun. We're having fun. We're having and fun. and, and uh, who would have thought tax, who would've thought tax lawyers fun. could be funny? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And now if, if people aren't tuning out already, I'm just going to say, I, I, know, I know how people just, they hear tax and they think like, this is the hardest thing Ugh. in the world to try and explain why it's not horrible. But I'm going to do my best yes. if I can. Yes. Uh, if you make it funny, it's all good. I'm doing, I'm really trying. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, taxes people, are funny, right? People I mean, don't just want to, to, to laugh at the tax situation, right? <laughs> people want to pay less tax, Aaron, and that's what we're going to talk about, how people and businesses can pay less yeah. tax today, and, right? um, I like, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not one for uh, gimmicks and things like that, but I, I thought it'd be fun to do a little demonstration today, if I may. Okay, absolutely, absolutely yeah. Okay. We all know what this is. Actually, maybe we don't because of the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I remember point. those. This Isn't is that from one. the last century? Yeah, uh, yeah. It was etched in stone okay. in the uh, wow. you know, 6th century. Look how yeah. thick uh, that is, eh? That's BC. the Toronto? This is uh, Toronto, yeah. It's about 1,000 pages. 1,000 pages. Mm -hmm. pages long. It's got those thin, you know, those thin uh, uh, newsprint pages, yeah. mm -hmm. right? We used to use these to look up phone numbers. Right. People really don't anymore. They yeah. just go on a search engine. But Why that's what that is. Why are they still even printing those okay. things? And that's a pretty big... Everybody used to have one of these. Everybody used to use... This was yeah. probably the biggest book in your house if you yes. had one. Yes, yes. It's got a lot of pages unless you have War and Peace or something. Yeah. But this was it, right? And then this is the Income Tax Act. Oh, oh my okay. God. Over 2,000 pages. Same type of pages. Often mistaken for a phone book <laughs> for, you know, the entire continent, maybe. And uh, it's not fun to read it's fun to play with uh if you're a tax lawyer and to some degree an accountant but uh it's uh this is what people are afraid of and that's my job is really to take away that fear wow. okay well, the fear of this gigantic that. daunting document so have you read that whole thing uh no i can't say that i've read the whole thing although there are uh parts of it that are amusing for example there's one sentence that goes on for 14 pages 
Is, it, is no that a record? Way. Did that make the Guinness Book of, it should, of World Records? I think, although I think the other income tax acts in the rest of the world, uh, yeah. different countries probably have similar things. But it's you know it, it, oh it just it's separated by semicolons and commas, but it's essentially one sentence. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Like something Unbelievable. like six hundred words or something. So it's you know it's not fun to read, uh, but that's that's kind of where I come in. And uh, the problem is everybody's got to do this and particularly high net worth individuals and small and mid-sized businesses, they pay a lot of tax and then 2012 just happened and they're gonna pay their tax bill and they're all scared and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I can help them right. figure out what they can do for next year to well, minimize that tax liability. Okay, so uh, as a taxpayer mm -hmm. and as a citizen, as a business owner, I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking, I, I don't know, when does the lawyer come in? Because a lot of people, they just deal with, maybe they deal with H&R Block, or they deal with uh, their accountant, yeah. or their bookkeeper, you know, so when do you need to think, think about getting a lawyer involved? Okay, you start thinking about getting a tax lawyer involved, if you're paying a lot of tax, and your accountant didn't tell you why you, why you paid so much tax. So accountants should be the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're very, for a simple individual one, I can't help people who are employees and that's where they derive their main income because you, your income tax gets deducted from your- Automatically. Mm -hmm. Automatically mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right, so that's not your client base. No, this is not my <coughs> client base. Kay. My client base are the higher net worth individuals with uh, a lot of investments, or capital investments and things like that, or uh, doctors who are not incorporated or who are in private practice and paying a lot of tax. See, see this is what I was referring to about the singing DJ. Okay, because the singing DJ, the singing is on top of the DJ. It's complimentary. So you work with, I work with accountants. accountants all the time. Okay, so they you don't work instead of accountants. Yeah, You're they all love like, me because okay. I, they, what, what normally happens is because of what I do, it creates more business for them. Okay. Uh, and reduces the tax liability simultaneously of the client. Okay. Which, okay. Is, which is, seems unusual, but that's what makes my job, uh, not the job itself, but the sale so easy, is that this is an objective exercise. They'll come to me for a free consultation, and I'll look at their financial situation and say, okay, if we do X, Y, and Z, you will save 40 grand a year. In other words, they come to you, they don't spend any money, and they end up saving uh, or putting thousands of dollars in their pocket. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know, in some cases, I just worked with a doctor who has an accountant who's a very good, he's a very good guy, he's a very nice guy, I had several conversations with him. Uh, but when I met with the doctor, I found a way that he could use one of the a couple of the strategies. There's income splitting, there's income deferral, and there's, uh, or there's tax deferral, sorry. And there are a few different other strategies you can do to minimize your tax liability. And I called his accountant and said, you know, let's do this, that, and this, and they structured him up, and now he's saving forty thousand a year. So how come the tax or the uh, how come the accountants don't know about this kind of stuff? Question. See, yeah, yeah, well, they, the problem is uh, many of them are aware of it, but they don't do structuring. So when when a mm -hmm. client comes to them to do their taxes, mm -hmm. if they're a tax account like the income tax account, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they'll just take the information they're given and okay. do their taxes okay. based on the information okay. they're given. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sometimes they'll recommend they speak to someone like me or a tax specialist accountant who will ultimately refer them to me to do the okay, taxes. Okay, so you're, you're so what's the difference between a tax specialist accountant then okay. and you? So those guys will deal with administering, now it's getting complicated, but with administering complex tax structures. Okay. So I set it up, accountants administer. Okay. Uh, okay. If I set something up complicated, they the have somebody, somebody who's more, okay. and I work with them to set up the structure as well. Okay. The okay. problem with, that I found with accountants is uh, they're, they work with the structure they're given. So not really thinking outside, outside the box. Outside the box, right, right. got it, I'm okay. I'm given something. It's a formula that they the plug in rules. pretty much, right? They right. And you kind of customize to lifestyle and. Yeah, whatever I can do to squeeze every drop out of that, any dollar that they can keep in their pocket Kay. that would otherwise go to the crown, Kay. I would rather do. Because I know the rules. I know the law. Mm -hmm. They don't read the cases, Kay. really. Uh, they don't know what people have gotten away with. Okay. I know what they get away okay. with. Okay, okay, Aaron, okay. okay. This is getting exciting now. Yeah, okay. Are you, are but you excited? I'm getting, getting excited, excited but taxes. before I ask the... I've seen you smile in a while. Really? <laughs> okay, before I ask the exciting question, though, I wanna, I, I'm want to. i not quite sure what you mean by the structure. Mm. Okay. You know? Just as a simple example, 
um, corporations up to 500,000 uh, pay, 50, generally pay 15% tax. 15, one five? one five, okay. Up yeah. to 500,000 yeah, in, in what, in revenue? Revenue. Ontario, if you're, yeah, in, in, in income. Revenue. Okay. Income. Revenue or profit. Well, revenue, not necessarily because there are deductions, right? So Net the revenue. income, yeah, it's taxable income, you can call okay. it. Okay. 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 So five hundred thousand dollars so in taxable income pay pay about fifteen percent. Complicated. See? So <laughs> yeah. I just think they do that to to mess us all up. They do. They do. Do they? Yeah. Why are they that's trying to mess the us up? Because Aaron. they want money, and okay. they don't want us to figure out how it works. Okay. So that's why people come to me. It's funny. A lot of my clients See, are doctors, I knew that. Mm -hmm. and when you go into a doctor's office. I mean, generally, you're a little worried, concerned, or even scared about yeah. what they might find yeah. if it's other th anything other than a regular checkup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, whereas I have a lot of doctors coming to me, mm -hmm. and they're nervous with, with a receipt from the CRA <laughs> that just paid you know under fifty, two hundred thousand in tax last year, mm -hmm. and they're scared and they're saying, I can't even pay this tax bill. Mm -hmm. I I spend all my money already. Like mm -hmm. I, I have a tax liability of two hundred thousand. I can't even pay it. What should mm -hmm. I do? Mm -hmm. So wow. the first step is you got to negotiate with CRA. But the next step is restructure it so that they're not liable for so much tax anymore. So, so let me ask you something, Aaron. If if they come to you and said, "Okay, look, this is what I paid last year. I don't want to pay it again this year." Yeah. Can you actually go back and say, "You know what? We can get you some money back from the year before." No, it's a little too late. You can't okay. for two thousand and twelve. Okay. I mean, there are certain okay. things you may or may not be able to do, but generally speaking. The, okay, this is the thing. The general rule of thumb is you you want to pay tax because it means you're making money if you pay tax. Paying tax is a good sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have a tax return that says you owe zero, mm -hmm. it means you made zero. Mm -hmm. You have to pay tax. Mm -hmm. But the rule is you're allowed to structure your affairs mm -hmm. to pay as little tax as possible. You're allowed. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. And that means using trusts and corporations and dividends and family mm. members and all that kind of thing. And what you're saying is that uh, a lot of the ways to do that are really not, uh, that the, the accountants aren't really aware of it mm -hmm. and, and the people in general no. and business owners in general aren't aware of these. I don't want to say they're not aware of it. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that when you want to stretch uh, the bounds of the basic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you should speak with a tax lawyer. Okay, so as a general rule of thumb for somebody thinking, okay, well, I, I'm not sure, should I go see, do I just need an accountant or should I actually see a lawyer? So what would you say the income base is that, that they might want to consult a, a tax lawyer like yourself? Well, like $100,000? If you're making 100000 it might be worth checking. Or I'd say two? anything over seventy five. Okay. Uh, probably okay. if you're, if you're a, uh, an independent contractor, so you're running your own business okay. kind of thing, you're a small business, okay. and you're paying all, you know, if you're, if you're paying like the regular rate of tax and your accountant hasn't recommended anything to reduce it, or they're not sure about it, which is okay. I mean, it doesn't mean they're a bad accountant. They're all very good accountants. It's just the thinking outside the box, knowing what's in the toolbox, right. knowing what's available, right. how you can stretch it. That's the fun part for me. Okay. Okay, so now I noticed, uh, you know, before we started the show today, you were speaking with uh, Thomas over there, because mm -hmm. uh, he, he was just starting a business, right? Mm -hmm. Like who are, you know, who are the kind of clients that you want to be dealing with, or the people that are watching? Are you, you know, are they small business people? Are they individuals? Yeah. What, well, what? Okay, so there's individuals who are in business for themselves and then there are small and mid-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. All of those people are okay. Startups are very good for me. I've dealt with many, many startups because if you don't get it started on the right foot, yeah. you know, and, and accountants can't do in corporations. They're right. not allowed to. Okay. Yeah. They're okay. not allowed to do okay. the legal work. Okay. They can't do anything that's legal work. Only lawyers can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you want to set up a structure right from the beginning, uh, correct, I mean. So that you don't come back after and say, look, I paid $200,000 yeah, this time around. I don't want to do it again. So this way you prevent, it. you stop them from paying the $200,000 to begin sometimes. with. It's scary sometimes. And I've had people come back after a couple <laughs> years in business and tell me, uh, you know, this was set up for me improperly at the beginning mm -hmm. of my okay. business. Yeah. <clears throat> now I want to sell it. Or now I have a new guy who wants to buy into my business. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it's going to cost you a couple thousand to fix it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. You should have just come to me in the first place okay. and we could have set it up correctly. Okay, question. Start. Why should we trust you? Why should you trust me? What uh, makes you qualified? Why should you trust anybody, I guess, is a good question in life. I have uh, a lot of experience with this kind of stuff. I've dealt with a lot of people. I have a lot of clients that would be happy to vouch for me. I've been working on a master's in tax law for the last two years that I'm almost finished. Wow. So I have all this experience. Okay. But just on top of it, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> 
and you're I think really it'd be fun to work with. Well, you know, I was good. I mean, that's I like something. I to make it fun. I mean, it's a lot of people find this stuff dry, but I well, find it very interesting. And, and the reason the reason I asked that question was because um, you have to be really qualified. You have to have a certain amount of. You have to have the backing, and and you know, not everybody can say they. You know, a lot of people might say, "Hey, I, I know how to do this, and you don't need to go see a lawyer and that kind of thing." And that's why I'm saying. That's why I asked the question because you're actually qualified. Well, I was going to ask the, the question in a little bit different way, and that was like, because obviously, mm -hmm. as you say, it's fun for you to do this, mm -hmm. and that's what, I mean, it's, that's a good thing when people are doing work that they find fun and enjoyable, because obviously they're going to, there's just so much m m more in it. They're just, it's enjoyable. Yeah. They're going to do a better job at it, right? Yeah. I'm just curious, what, I mean, what was it that got you interested in this in, in the first place? Yeah. The challenge. It's challenging. It's probably it's like it's like the brain surgery of law, basically. I mean, if you if you want to do something hard, I was doing things. I was doing corporate commercial work. It was pretty standard. You're doing the same thing. I was working at a downtown firm in Toronto. You were bored. And uh, yeah, it, it just it wasn't. Yeah. So I ended up leaving the firm and pursuing my own private practice and consulting. And mm -hmm. I work with consulting <coughs> firms on these, and I work with several clients on these things, and. Uh, it's on the one hand satisfying mm -hmm. to kind of rescue people from mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. things. They don't even realize 40, 50, 60,000. I just talked to a doctor mm -hmm. uh, specialist who was paying 300,000 in tax, in tax. Mm -hmm. like, wow. And now it's, now it's closer to 100, which is still and a so lot it's of money. Gotta, it's got to. It justifies my fee, if that's nothing else. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's got to make you feel really good when you know these people. I mean, they come in with so much fear. Yeah. And you, you actually, that's the thing I really like about you, is that because you embrace it so much that, you know, you can actually help to alleviate some of that fear. Yeah, well, I people mean, fear the unknown. Yeah. I and they, they fear the big government, and right? The like, Canada revenue. Try, I, I recommend reading this only if you have trouble sleeping. <laughs> like, this is a very powerful sedative. You can go through, like, the first page and you're out, <laughs> if you can get that far. Or if you can get, you read that 14-page sentence. Yeah, try to oh get to the God. end of it. Wow. It's not easy. So now you're you're as you mentioned uh, you're getting your masters in yes, in at, tax at Osgood, law, which is uh, just down the street from here. It's yeah. at Young and yeah. Dundas. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know such a, a degree existed, but uh, masters in tax law, LLM. Now it <sighs> that's what it's called. So now the 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 law, the tax law, mm -hmm. is um, it's created. It's not a natural law. It's created by the government, and the government can change that law. Just sure, like periodically, and Just they like do, money? right? It does, it does. I think the difference, I mean, there is a tax court of Canada. I don't know if you know about that. It's, in, it's a separate court just set up for tax disputes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's internal, you go through the CRA. If you have a complaint, you do a, uh, a no, uh, an appeal in, mm -hmm. within the CRA, and then you can appeal to the courts. Yeah. But first there's the tax court. Yeah. And then you can appeal, appeal to the federal court and then to the Supreme wow. Court of Canada. Okay. Yeah. So, a lot of law, I mean, people know the common law, right? Court-made law. Okay. But the thing about the Income Tax Act, the reason it's so thick mm -hmm. is there's almost no wiggle room there. There's no room for common law. There's no room for the courts to insert rules. That's why it's so contrived. It's that, Does that make Because they want it that way? Because they don't want the courts right, to interpret the law? they don't want anyone to mess with it. They want their money. Yeah. It wants its money, I yeah. should say. Like, the government needs money to run. Well. So if s people start to find loopholes and things like that, believe me, it's addressed quick. And the okay. Crown has a hole, and I have friends in so the that's, Crown. So that's attorneys. the other thing, okay? So when you find, how, long, how often does this change? Because for these doctors, for instance, you find all these loopholes. Yep. Then do they catch up? Does the government catch up and say, okay, uh, yeah, you ever uh, hear uh, the budget? no more. The federal budget? Yeah. yeah. That is a list of changes to the federal income tax. Act. And wasn't and they, there a like big. A, among other things. Yeah. And year. basically, it's trying every to catch year. the loopholes. Yep. It's like they're trying to catch up, every make year. up for their mistakes. And what was it a couple of years wow. ago? Weren't companies, corporations, turning themselves into, what were they, trusts? And oh, then the yeah. government okay. put the kibosh on, on that? That's been like kind of the big thing in my master's. The theme. Yeah. I'm doing a major research paper on this, too. Uh, they pretty much, uh, anyway, it's like a whole other thing. But yeah. they, they've been creating things that were or using things that were created, you know, 100 years ago or more, hundreds of years ago in Britain, mm -hmm. and transforming them into tax, eva not evading, but avoiding. That's what that trust thing was. The corporations all of a sudden found yeah. this massive loophole, yeah. essentially, right? Oh, geez. And they're, they're finding loopholes, not just, I mean, lawyers. We find yeah. loopholes every day, 
uh, all my papers that I've been doing were on loopholes of different things in the Income Tax Act. Just digging, wow. digging, trying to find exceptions. Yeah. And then they close the loophole and you find a new one. Yeah. So, so when they come out with a new budget, do they take people like you, tax lawyers, and say, okay, look it, the tax lawyers are killing us because they're finding so many loopholes, so now we need to hire tax lawyers to combat those other tax lawyers well, they have, and close uh, off those loopholes. They have what's called the Department of Justice, which is their law firm. It's the biggest law firm uh, in Canada. It's the, federal, it's the federal government law firm. Okay. And they have a whole team of tax lawyers. Okay. Uh, that, like, they have a whole tax department inside the Department of Justice that only deals with these. So they so don't need private... We, it's us against them. I was just going to say, so you're pitted against yeah, each other. We go okay. to court, it's against the, 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 the tax crown. lawyers. It's always the crown versus some private individual. Have you ever gone to court? I've been involved in uh, a few appeals to the tax court, yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to say that I've won all awesome. of them. So how is that tax court? Because I've heard that uh, they're not exactly um, impartial. What do you mean? Well, well that's justice. what I've heard. So justice. you could correct my uh, misperception, but you I've, mean I've it's heard like it. in favor of the of the crown, or that, in favor that, of, the of keeping the money, of well, getting in as the much crown money. because the judge is, in a sense, an actually an employee of CRA. You know, as much as I would love, love to endorse that, I, I can't. I've seen them go either way. Have you? And, uh, awesome. I mean, they'll, they're very fair, the judges. They're very okay. knowledgeable on these matters. Okay. It's a very complex area of law, so frankly, it's a little difficult to... Are these BS. judges tax lawyers as well, then? What would it take to be a judge for something for like that? For the tax court? Yeah, a lot yeah. of them came from tax practice. Okay, Well, to become a judge, you have to be a, a, a member of the Law Society in good standing for 10 years. Okay. So... Oh. That generally means you're you're practicing more. I have a question for you. Okay, okay. why is it called Canada Revenue? It I'm used to be. I send you a bill after this. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. It, well, um, you just had him speechless for a minute. <laughs> wow. That's a rarity. That's a rare feat. Wow. I wasn't speechless, but I just chose not to respond. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> thankful for that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back <clears throat> on my next smartass remark. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just okay. In deference to you. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> but why is it called Canada Revenue Agency now? Because it used to be called Revenue Canada. Right. And now it's called Canada. And, and you know. How much money did it cost question. to change that head? Well, that there's rumors that head. they they sold it to the King of Spain or somebody. What? Is that yeah. is that true? What? True. True. We now what? belong to Spain. No. Uh, well, our second language. Just like is Highway 407. No, that's Spanish. not true. Huh? But luckily, Spanish and French are close enough that you know changing you those road signs. They developed a plan over 30 years to just change one letter every couple of years and. No, no, no. Seriously? Uh, no, I think that, um, I, look, I don't know the answer why they did that. I think it was part of the Harper administration's uh, attempt to modernize sort of its, uh, I mean, you know, there was a liberal control for a very long period mm -hmm. of time, and then it moved to conservative, mm -hmm. and they made a lot of changes like that to <laughs> sort of make it their own I, I Harper thing. does a lot of things just to put his own stamp on yeah, something. Yeah, put his own stamp on it. And, and that's, I think, why he did that. That may or may not be the reason. I, I honestly, I, I can't say. Okay. Uh, All right. It, it but there's no, real, there's no real What about, okay, I got another question. What about admiralty law? Okay. Uh, does that apply? A little different, a little does that, different does that, what I deal with. Does that, okay, is, is it related at all to the tax law? Only, the only way I can think that they are related is that they're both federal. Okay. The Income oh, okay. Tax so Act is federal no. and Admiralty Law is federal, so if you're dealing with income tax or Admiralty, you can go f to any province and deal with it. And their okay. book but is every just province as big. has its own, has its own uh, little little thing on the tax law, you know, like HST and things like that. Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we don't, yeah, we don't have a lot of time left, Aaron, but is there anything else that we, uh, that you want to let us know about? I mean, I... Well, I'd be happy if uh, anybody who hears about this would love to drop me a line, Aaron at greenhouse.ca, A-A-R-O-N at G-R-I-N-H-A-U-S dot C-A. Uh, you can check out my web website, greenhouse.ca. If you have any questions, free consultations, drop me a line anytime you like. I'm happy to help. You know, I, I really take away some of the fear. I love that free consultation idea yes, and I think the that's, fact I think that that's one of the things that makes you different too, right? I don't think a lot offer free consultations. No, it's, it's difficult to find out there, but I'm confident that if I can help you, that it's going to be objective. So the sale, I, I don't like to think of myself as a salesman because mm -hmm. I offer a product that either helps you or doesn't help you, and you can see if it helps you. Right. And it helps you by saving you money. So if you got to pay me a little bit of that, 
to make it happen. And then the next year it keeps happening and you don't have to pay me anymore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What Why an not? investment that is. And plus you're funny, so he's like a funny tax lawyer. <laughs> Okay. Rare combination, singing DJ much. and funny tax lawyer. I appreciate that. All right, Aaron, thanks for coming in today. Thank and you doing for this. Thank uh, you. Aaron at greenhouse.ca and um, or check out the website. We're going to take a little break now. All right. And I, need to, I need to digest that information. Okay. Well, let's do that. Fourteen over this next one sentence. Couple of minutes, wow. and we're going to come back with uh, Carolyn Fay from the Blues Collective, all the way from Montreal, awesome. here for the Maple Blues Award. So we'll be right back here on Liquid Lunch. Standing here in the sun Looking out on the field Not wanting to run Ice got no chance Melts down in a touch Sitting back in this heat Don't want to do much The heat of my touch brings Fire to your skin a sip of your gin brings me back to the original sin. Just like a devil clawing at your guts, aching to breathe. But the sun's too hot What a way to live Sitting here in this heat Waiting with a wish That'll make your heart skip a beat Heat of my touch brings Fight to your skin A sip of your gin Brings it back to the original sin To a tree, just waiting for wind to give me reprieve. Hanging on to life, trying to live it straight. Don't mind my teas, honey, you're just at my bait. The heat of my touch brings fire to your skin. A sip of your gin brings me back to the original sin So we're back here on the show, and uh, that was a, a track, a video uh, called Original Sin by Carolyn Fay, and we have Carolyn joining us here, Hello. right here, right now. Hello. It's, <laughs> wow, it's, it's great to have you here all the way from Montreal. Amen. Amen. What a, it was a great drive yesterday. You got to watch it in the winter, right? You don't oh, want to get. Do have snow? Oh, they got snow. Hey, we have a lot of snow, but it, it melted, actually. We had, what, 
I think plus eight oh. a couple of days ago. So it just melted it down. You know, we were just talking about that because you guys had a record snowfall right after Christmas, right? I have never seen so much snow since the 70s. Wow. It piles, snow banks, and it just never ended. You know what was so funny? Because that day, I was, in, I I was telling you I was in Montreal yeah. for Christmas, and we saw that snowstorm coming. It was going to hit Toronto, and we said, we better go back today. We, we came back a day early because of that snowstorm, because I hate being on the 401 oh. in a snowstorm. It's brutal. And no like it's, I, I made a vow one time. It took me about 12 hours to do that drive, white knuckling it, oh, and cars God. were going off the road left yeah, and right. Yeah. And I said, I, I don't ever want to do this again. Oh, and no. we got into Toronto half an hour before the snow started, but nobody expected that Montreal was going to get a record snowstorm. Oh, it was brutal. But how does, how does that happen? We have no snow here. What is it with Toronto? We, it, no, we do it with it's, we, we do it with our special. minds. We control the weather yeah, with our minds. See, we have around. yeah. It's be, yes, yeah. it's because we have this big <laughs> spiritual community that kind of helps to tame the weather. And you just push it on eastbound, right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you guys are used <laughs> to it. I know you know yeah, you know yeah. how to deal yeah. with but it. But you know what, you guys, yeah, you guys know how to deal with it. Here yeah. we don't. I mean, you know, two inches or and we're we're done. You know, it's that's it. We have to call in the army. But you, oh. right? We have to call in the army. <laughs> call out the Montrealers and shovel. Yes, exactly. But you guys oh, wouldn't come because you'd no. be laughing at us. Okay, I don't know why and we're we talking do. about. <laughs> but you guys have the city shovels your sidewalks. We have to shovel our own sidewalks. That's true. Really? You guys yeah. have the city yeah. does it. Sidewalks. The city does oh, yes, it. They do. Yeah. They wow. do. Okay, let's start talking about the blues because. Yes. Carolyn, so how long have you been in the singing blues? Singing blues per se. I came out in 2008, so I'm kind of like a newbie in the industry. Wow, okay. Uh, prior to that, I was an actress, still am, do film, TV. Okay. Uh, but, um, but you must have always had the voice. I had a voice. Okay. So they said. I had a voice. I was doing Euro jazz, cover ah. songs, but the blues was always in the blood. Mm -hmm. Not bad for an Asian woman, though. <laughs> now, how did that happen? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. <laughs> really? You know what? I really don't know. Well, were you born in? I was born in the Philippines. Oh, okay. See, you look native to me. Thank you. You actually do. <laughs> Thank you. So I it made a sense to me. for that. <laughs> See, it, it made sense to me that you were bluesy because you looked native <laughs> to me. Oh. Isn't that interesting? Oh. I think there's a past life coming through here. Maybe. Maybe. I think that's what's going on. Okay. Maybe. So that spiritual Toronto yeah. thing happening yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're going to bring some nice weather with you when you go back to Montreal. Oh, well, yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so that's, but that's interesting. So how, how did the blues thing really happen? What, what attracted um, you to that, or how did that actually I've, happen? I've always loved the blues. I've always listened to B.B. King, Buddy Guy, um, mix that up with some of the non-blues artists that I, I, I appreciate. Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails. Oh, so real current stuff. R real current stuff. But the blues was always down there. And I, when I had the opportunity to partner up with Dan Legault, who is in the band, our drummer and our um, uh, engineer, mm -hmm. we, Dan and I said, you know what? We both love the blues. Why don't we push the envelope just a bit? So we started with an EP, and it started out for fun. But before you know it, we're getting airplay in radio stations in Montreal and web wow. stations all over, and we're getting requests to gig, requests to show, and it just bulldozes over. And 2011, and yeah, 2011, we come out with our second CD, Original Sin, which. Um, this one here, which yeah. I'm just holding up here. You're eating a meat apple. I'm eating a meat apple, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a goo. You look like a, I don't know. Well, you know, that's along the actual. vampire <laughs> thing. Yeah, vampire. Yeah. That's, that's something Marilyn Manson would appreciate. <laughs> exactly. So there's a touch of the, the gore goth. Yeah. thing happening there. Love the blue lips and eye eyeliner. That's very cool. Thank you. And the title, Original Sin, has connotations to the Bible. 
Right. Uh -huh. um, I'm thinking in excess. Don't they have something called Original Sin? Or there's quite a few songs out in the market with Original Sin as a title. Yeah. 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 Wow. But we draw back from. Uh, there's a, a few Bible related tunes out there just to push the envelope a bit. Wow, yeah. very, very cool. nice. Yeah. Did you write, is this all original music then? It's all original music. Uh, when we do covers, it's only for live performances. Okay. Both our CDs are all original music and Original Sin, the CD, is the one that really got the industry attention. We've got nominated, won awards, um, wow. Actually, in Quebec, this album, Original Sin, won the List Blues Awards for Best Blues and Associated Styles album of 2012, which is the equivalent of the Maple Blues Award that's happening uh, this weekend. Okay, now what's your secret to go from, n you know, nothing. nothing to getting all these awards and getting uh, all this airplay and stuff like that? And you mentioned Dan Legault. Yes. Uh, and he's in the band, but he's and producer. Yeah. I mean, is that part of the secret? Why That's you guys are so successful? You gotta click. Mm -hmm. um, you have to click with your band members. It's like, I I write the lyrics. I I have an idea. The band members have a vibe, a riff happening, and before you know it, a song is out. Mm -hmm. But how did you come together with this particular group of band members? Um, Dan Legault and I have been working long long time ago um, in music or acting or in acting actually okay. Yeah, okay. we used to do actors voice demos in Montreal okay. and okay. started up and then when my previous band broke up I said then uh, the blues this is they're calling it's yeah, a call let's try this and, uh, what was your previous band it was called DD Swank uh, okay and it, the concept of DD Swank was um, there's this woman in the 1700s, way ahead of her time, traveled, did all what she can, wrote poetry, left these pieces of poems all over the world, and we would sing it. Ah. We, the, the band Dee Dee Swank would sing it. So the feel was more of a Euro jazz, light pop. Very neat. It was nice, it was nice, but you know when you have a calling for something yeah. you wanted something it's a little a deeper yeah. yeah it's a do or die situation you got to do it okay so yeah. is this who you are carolyn I, I, this blues is this does this feel like you've come home now i'm home i am definitely home even more than the acting for you even more than the acting even more than the acting i am home. okay so if you had to choose oh oh, oh don't. no not the acting versus okay, the singing okay. um but let's say what what is more home for you the actual writing or the performing that's the same type of question <laughs> i think singing writing perform because they are two they're using two they are very different parts of you exactly um I mean, because you really bury your soul when you're writing. Oh, yes. And it took me a long time to admit to writing. A long, long time. Because, like you said, one bears their souls, their fears, their weaknesses. And, and when um, you're putting that out there on stage, boy, you become very, very vulnerable. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary. But I do like performing. Um, it, it, performing uh, in French, calm, satisfies. A huge ah. chunk of me. So you perform in French too, as yes. well as English. Well, all our songs are in English, but because by default Montreal, you're in Montreal Quebec, yeah. yeah, we speak French. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Very yeah. neat. Now you're in town for the uh, the Blue Summit. Yes. So what is the Blue Summit? The Blue Summit is an event that is hosted by the Toronto Blues Society. It happens once every two years. Now, the Toronto Blues Society, they handpick bands from across Canada to showcase in this full weekend affair to bookers, e event uh, creators, managers. So it's a chance for us to break out of the province of Quebec. We have been handpicked to perform. So you're performing. Wow. So oh, they yes. approached you. They approached us. Um, last summer I did uh, uh, an event with the Toronto Blue Society in Nathan Phillips Square. Okay. Which is just across the street almost. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just over there. I get my bearings that way. Yes. <laughs> that way, folks. Yeah. Um, 
And from then on, we got the invitation to perform at the nice. Blues Summit. And nice. Crossing my fingers, the industry folks will will be sitting right there and liking what they hear and see. And then write a big check, right? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. Why would they be writing a big check? Because you're. Well, that's what the whole Blue Summit is for. For the industry to discover to the discover great new artists, new artists, yeah, and then give you a check so you can write do another CD or book us other gigs, invite us to festivals, okay. thus leaving a day job. Okay. Wait a sec. I this is Canada. It. You're not allowed to leave your day job. Oh yes, I heard about that. Eh? Right. Mm. If you're lucky enough to have one. We <laughs> must keep it. Yes, we <laughs> must keep our day job. Yeah. So you can continue to. <clears throat> pay taxes and perform on a seasonal basis yeah yeah off That's hours yes because artists are not taxpayers mm. Mm. should we get political no yeah we can get political <laughs> we just had our tax guy on oh yes of right course. that gives us free reign right? <clears throat> oh yes and look what about ireland <clears throat> Excuse me, Ireland, where the artists don't have to pay tax or something like that. They, they get, you really? know, they treat their really? artists with respect with there. With respect, really? get yes. out of town. <clears throat> with they go. I didn't know and that. Artists are professionals. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, time but to how come? Orders. So, 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 but they don't get. Okay, they're considered professionals, yet they're. Um, they you don't know, have to pay taxes. But they get to make a living they with their art they can live uh with our tax system here in canada more yeah. so in quebec it's it's worse in quebec it's a lot harder work we're, we're we're highly taxed in quebec it's because uh, they shovel your sidewalks for you that's see but you know what we don't have to pay but for you know that what? here that <laughs> but, but, the, but the truth <laughs> is too that in quebec they honor their artists a lot more than the rest of canada does yes and no no, okay. Yes and no. Okay. Quebec is such a small market. Uh, I was talking about this with my husband the other day. Quebec is such a small artist and that there are cliques and networks that are on, um, on, a, on a rotation. Because if every talented artist, because there's Quebec in general is an incubator of talent. The amazing talent. Amazing Quebec. talent. Amazing. And then yeah. they move on to Toronto. Not hiding that fact. They all move on to Toronto. Do they really? A lot of my artist friends are here, actors, musicians. They're all moving out of Quebec because Quebec is so huh. small that if all these artists are working, then the public does not have that chance to make that connection, that, that fan base, that, okay. mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we have to move out. Sad story. It's interesting. I mean, I think that any, any artist in anywhere in Canada faces challenges that mm -hmm. artists in other countries, especially the U.S., don't. don't. Yeah. don't. You know, because yeah. on the one hand, you've got the advantage in Quebec, especially if you're a French-speaking artist, yeah. that, like, it's hard for English-speaking uh, Canadian. They have to compete with all the Americans and all yes. the British. But in... in in Quebec, if you're if you're a French-speaking artist, then really you've got, you know, you're appreciated, and you don't have to necessarily compete with the Americans, right? Right. Well, it's a, ni a niche market, it but it's a niche smaller. Market. Are you welcomed mm -hmm. um, by France? By France? Yeah, because that's French. That's French. Um, I haven't opened the borders in France yet. Okay. Um, I, I would like to open the borders across Canada first. Okay. Um, as we say in, in, in French, taquet canadien, which means tattooed Canadian. Ah. Yes. Uh, so I'd like to establish the band, the music within Canada first before thinking of, of moving on elsewhere. Well, that's totally awesome. And, and you, now, okay, so you guys are performing at the Delta Chelsea, is it? Yes. Th this weekend? This weekend, January 19th, 1030 at the Market Square. Yes. Ten thirty oh, p.m. p.m. January nineteenth at the tr at the Blue Summit Delta Chelsea Hotel, which is just up the street here. Just up the street, yes. And uh, is there like uh, admission for people that might want to come? Is this open to the public? Um, I don't know. You are welcome to come see the showcases. Okay. That's all I can say. Um, In other words, we're welcome to come and see you. Well, the dress. Yes. Okay. Come so and see us. Um, 
I think that the uh, the special conferences they are closed to the industry, but you are welcome to, to see, see the entertainment. Entertainment. Okay. Yeah, so is there a website? Fun. TorontoBluesSociety.com. Okay. And then you can see the banner for the Blues Summit. Okay. Which this year coincides with the Maple Blues Award. That's the place where I aspire to uh, eventually make. Is that, is Are you is nominated that like a for Hall anything of fame this year? Pardon me? Are you nominated for anything this year? Uh, for 20. For the Maple Blues? No, 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 no. Not yet. Okay. Working on it. Is All this right. is is this like a Hall of Fame for for the Blues? This Maple yes. Blues? Okay. Okay. Yes. It's okay. what every blues artist. In Canada, aspire to. Oh, and I saw wow. the I saw the award, which is a, a blue maple leaf. Yes. It's a really nice looking award. It's gorgeous. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Well, listen. I, I, I wish you uh, best of luck with the summit. Thank you. And uh, and hopefully one of those uh, maple blues uh, awards one of these days. One of these. Well, days. with the way you're going, I have a <coughs> feeling that's not that far off. <laughs> Thanks. Now. Okay, now we're going to watch another video. Yes. I don't know if you know which one you want us to play. We're going to do Baby Bye Bye. Baby Bye Bye? Yes, Baby Bye Bye. Okay. Hope so, you okay. all like it. All right. from okay. original now, sin to Baby and, Bye Bye. And before we go, you got the two CDs. I'm just going to hold them up again, yes. Carolyn. You got the uh, the 100%. That's, That's the, the first, first one, right? The first one. Yep. And, uh, the, um, original Sin. Original, original sin. sin. Yes. Uh, which album is this video from? Uh, the song? Original sin. So it's new, Both of them. new stuff. New stuff. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, and before you we got lipstick. we have to get your website. Yeah, you can visit us at carolyn-fay.com. That's Carolyn with an L Y N hyphen Fay as in F E dot com. Okay, and can people order the CDs uh, from the website? Yep, it's there. You can order it, download I just, it. I just want to know where did you get your blue lipstick? That's actually. Uh, Literatista, the photographer who took it and did a great job with the Photoshop. I did have wow. a blue base, but wow, he just. Very cool. He just. You should, it sell even more. you should make blue lipstick and sell it at your shows with the CDs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carolyn. That would be fun. Thank great you. to meet you. Thank Good you. luck. All the best of luck. Good luck. And Thank we look you. forward to this video right now, baby. Bye bye from uh, Carolyn Fay and uh, the Blues Collective. And then we're going to come back with our next guest, Bruce Graham, Canada Singing DJ, is here. We'll be right back.
So that was a fabulous video from uh, from Carolyn and bye bye uh, baby yeah and uh, we're joined oh, here baby now bye bye sorry baby bye bye <laughs> we're joined here now by Bruce uh, Graham uh, Canada singing DJ and Bruce great to have you here on the show Hi, Bruce. thank you very much for inviting me. So now we met uh, in Oakville uh, yes, a year or so ago, yes, and we did. Uh, and finally we uh, managed to get yes. you here on the show and yes. uh, it's great to to have you here thank you so. Uh, now, first of all, we were talking about the, the singing DJ and uh, wondering how that and why that works. And, and maybe even because I what think does that mean? people are struggling with what that means exactly, singing DJ. Well, I started off uh, 100 years ago uh -huh. in the music wow. business. I'm really, uh, the makeup is, is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I started off uh, with my band. I'm a, uh, I was a bass player, singer. Okay. And I toured all over Canada ten times. Hey, <laughs> I'm a bass wow. player too. You're kidding. No. Do you I'm sing? Backups. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I started off in bass. And you know why I took bass? It was easy to learn. That's why I took it. There you go. <laughs> One note at a time. I think, I think it's that whole well in St. Catharines area that you guys are from. I think everybody who's a musician in that area is a bass player. So you really can't form bands out there. Oh, be like I don't know. <laughs> there was a lot of bands. A lot of bands in those days. Um, so what was your band? Maybe uh, we remember who they were. Okay, well, okay, I live in Mississauga. I've been living here for a long, long time. But okay. I was born in St. Catharines. Okay. Now, I don't know if you remember this, there was a nightclub for teenagers back then called The Castle. In St. Catharines? In St. Catharines. Okay. Ron Metcalf, I don't know if you heard of him. It's familiar. He was a big band leader from St. Catharines originally. He had uh, the Woodchopper's Ball, I'm giving him a plug type of thing, but uh, he was well known in the United States. He came back and he started a teenage nightclub. So he had to be under the age of drinking to go to this thing. Mm -hmm. I was the house band at that TJ ah. uh, nightclub. Oh. There was three of us. I played the bass, sang all the songs. We had a drum and they had a guitar player. And that's how I started. My, in my so you were like career. Sting, the Sting of St. Catharines. Pretty well, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, where, I'm just curious, where, yeah. where was that club? That was right it, downtown. Uh, right on Lake Street and I can't remember the... I haven't been to St. Catharines in years, so oh, I think okay. it's, anyway, it's right. So it was, it was the place to be oh, yeah. for anybody under age. Oh, yeah. Wow. The place to go, and it was very, very nice. Total remodel yeah. place, beautiful place. Yeah. Wow. I mean, everybody, I was in school, everybody knew me, you know, I was, You oh. must have been a celebrity in your, yeah, in your area. Yeah, it really turned out to be that way, yeah. Now, that was your, it sounds like a high school, yes. when you were young kind yes. of thing, but then you wow. mentioned you were touring all over Canada with yes. bands. Now, what were those bands, what were the names of those bands well, that we might uh, remember? It's funny, uh, people come up, because you're, you're known type of thing, and one guy came up to me and he says, oh, we need a bass for, for the band, and uh, we're getting it going, blah, blah, blah. It was called the Four Squires. So uh, I went to the band called the Four Squires, and that's when I took off on the road. Quote, on the road. If anybody's ever been on the road, you don't <clears> want to <throat> go there. <laughs> no, I, see, I haven't been there yet. And I have, uh, I have this crazy fantasy. I want to do the Northern Ontario route in the winter. Oh, you know, God. I want to be driving from Cochrane to uh, Capus Casing. I've in, done that, uh, played all those towns <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> have you? And oh, would you yes. recommend that? Well, you know what? what if, we if you're crazy and young, maybe. Why not? You know, it was work. It was experience. The first job I had on the road, we went to, the, uh, it was called Fort William, Port Arthur, which is now called the Lakehead. Mm -hmm. That's a thousand miles from here. We had to drive up there. As soon yeah. as we got there, it was already booked. We were on the local TV channel. And then we played the university. We played a nightclub there. We were, in those days, they had clubs that you could play six nights a week. Now wow. you don't find them anywhere. Wow. But uh, so we were on the road and we traveled. We went all over Geraldton, you name it, every place. Fort Francis, uh, you name it, all the little wild towns in the winter. Did you play the president in Sudbury? Yes. Wow. Oh, you're, Can you and, know? And she's from Sudbury. Oh, are you? Yes. Shh. Wait a minute. Is nobody from Toronto? No, <laughs> nobody's from Toronto. We it's know like that LA. already. Nobody's originally from. <laughs> That's true. Nobody's really from Canada either, right? Uh, well, I'm really? born here. I, I know, but somebody you know wasn't, right? Somebody in your family lineage wasn't. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so wait a second. Now, wh uh, can we ask you what year that was, the Four Squires? Because it sounds that like that was 1966. See, I was going to guess something like that. Um, wow. Because that's wow. one of those names. Just before the Beatles and the post Beatles era, the, na well, the, the, the name then. styles changed yeah. a, a little bit. Well, it was all bands then. Yeah. Because of the Beatles. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were a singer, you were out. You notice all the, uh, the 50s, uh, like huh. the Paul Ankas and all that, yes. they all, the Neil Sedakas, they were gone because the Beatles took over. The bands took over. Yeah. So I was always wanting to, to sing, which I do a lot now, but I got into it by being a bass player and singer because that got me into the band. And that's yeah. how I did it. Wow, interesting. So, and then after the Four Squires, was there another band or other bands? Well, then I formed my own, the Bruce Graham Show, and it was a Vegas type of a show. I had uh, background singers, girls, I had a big band, we toured all over the place. It was a, a Las Vegas type of a show. And you toured all over Ontario? I, right over Canada, from Halifax, wow. all points west. And uh, th in those wow. days, I didn't play the bass, I put the bass down, I just sang, because that's what I wanted to do. 
music came back in the 70s. This is in the 70s. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, came back for the singer, and then the Paul Lankas came back, and people like that. And Neil Sedaka's career yep. was resurrected. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, and he's still playing around. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, then, then, so now we're in the 70s, and yes. we want to, we want to, we want to get the whole story yes. leading right up to today, Bruce. So. And then what happened was disco. Oh yeah. <gasps> oh. <laughs> okay, disco are you cringing? Are you cringing at that? It's funny how music changes. Now everybody wants to dance. The club scene died out. Huh. There wasn't clubs going six nights a week anymore. Yeah. Because people wanted to go because of that movie with John Travolta. Yeah, oh, Saturday that's Night Fever. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So everybody, and then <sighs> bottom line, all the work ended. All of my friends, and it's funny. For the live music kind live, of thing, That's right? right, live music. It's funny, I, I was on a plane uh, about a year ago. We were vacationing down in Mexico, my wife, and we just coincidentally sat beside this gentleman from Toronto here, and we got talking, and guess what? He was a musician, but he's not working musician anymore because disco ended his career. And he, we talked about all the people, like I was in the air where, you know, the Toronto bands, I was part of it at that time. A lot of them are no longer around anymore, unfortunately. You know, so I changed with the times. Somebody came up to me and says, Bruce, can you do a wedding and we need a disc jockey? I said, disc jockey? I'm not gonna be a disc jockey. That was an insult to my, uh, they said, well, well, we'll give you all this money. I said, I'm now a disc jockey. <laughs> 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 I got, one job out of that one, then I got another one. I got a, a caterer, which, I w which was in the place that I was playing, booked me every single uh, Saturday night to do weddings, and it just never stopped. It just never so stopped. So what, what year did that, was that, did that, that start? That was in 1984. Okay. That's when wow. I became a professional disc jockey, in 1984. So you're talking, what, 29 years right yeah. now. Yeah. Wow. This is wow. what I do. I don't have a real job. I wish I could get one, but... <laughs> no, you, no don't. you don't. No, I don't. Okay. You know, I used to be... I just got to say, you know, I remember when the disco thing happened. Yes. And I was, I was trying... To, and in fact, I was in St. Catharines with a bunch of friends hanging out. Were you, you know. living there then, or...? No, I was still in Welland. Oh yeah, okay. you know, so just up the up sure. the road, you know, all, you know how it is yes, in the peninsula. Yes. You go, you know, all over the different towns. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Blondie had just released Heart of Glass. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. here was a punk band, who had just released a disco song essentially, and at that moment, I was with my friend Trevor, and uh, we said we're going to write a disco song, and we did, and it was a fabulous, successful hit. Um, what was it called to you? It was called Disco Love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll play it at the end of the show. Okay. In fact, we'll okay. play it at the end of the show. Okay, Disco uh, Love. Okay, and, and, that's not a campy and name. And that was inspired by, uh, yeah, it's very campy, isn't it? <laughs> in, in retrospect. Okay, but Bruce, okay, and I used to be a DJ too. I, I used to go buy my records over in Buffalo. Okay, cheaper over there. Cheaper over there. Yep. I would take, and that's when you had I, records. Yes. I would take my record collection over the border. Oh. Uh, How and you then do that? I'd buy the new. Re well, they. I just oh, I just left them in the car. I oh, wasn't okay. importing them. Okay. And then I take the records that I bought and mix them up with my existing collection, oh. and then bring them back. That Are way, I didn't have to, to say that? pay the duty. What if Come and get me. Came back after you. <laughs> the CRA's coming. The CRA. Well, I got a good tax lawyer. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to worry about it. One just left. Wow. Exactly. Where are you? Okay, so that's 1984, yes. and, and did you tour that across the country, or? No, I was, uh, believe me, I've been on the road for a long time, and uh, the Montreal's, you just had a lady from Montreal, I've played there, played in Longay, Point in Port Claire, Point Claire wow. and all these places, and uh, I don't speak any French, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, I, I, you name it, I've been there. But, um, no, I, uh, I didn't really start singing until the background tracks came out. Now, I oh, used to say this right. to my band, as a joke, this is going back, now I'm going to backtrack just for a minute. I'm very particular in having good musicians. If they're no good, you're out. I'm sorry, you know, I consider myself a good singer, you better be as good as me type of thing. Because That's I'm depending on that music. Absolutely. Right. And I used to say to them, look, at, I can replace you, and this is before background tracks. I'll get cardboard cutouts of guys standing there playing the, the, the instruments, and I'll go in the studio and record the background and just use that. Don't have to use you and put up with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, that, the, I, I, you know what? I got to say, because uh, I'm still working at putting bands together, but I hear that James Brown was like that too. 
Like, you better be holding up yeah. your end, or James Brown is going to kick yeah, you out of the band. You know what he did? He'd go up there on the stage, he's doing his thing, and if he hurt, because we're all musicians, we know music, and if you hear something that's wrong, he used to go up and he'd go like this. He'd charge him $5 for making the mistake, and you knew who it was. And you go along, if anybody else made a mistake, there's another $10 or $5 at the end of it. That's how, that's how he kept his band really, really good. Yeah. So they made sure they didn't make any mistakes. Wow. And I'll tell you, and, and wow. I heard the same thing about Bruce Coburn, is that he will not, you know, he demands nothing but the very best from the people he's working with. Yeah. And that's why these guys are at the level that they're at, yeah. because they won't tolerate uh, mediocrity. Well, you know, and with me, being Canada's singing DJ, of course, uh, with the cost factors today, the bands aren't around and blah, blah, blah. So it's one person, I'm a one-man show, more or less, and I've got the background tracks, which are perfect. So I all don't have time. to worry about all, all the, time. the time. They're never late. They never talk back to me. <laughs> they, so, so as a singing <laughs> DJ, you play music and then you sing at the, as well? Yeah, here's how it works. Now, when I, when I first started it, I, I, I found these background tracks. I said, wow, where were you years ago? So I tried it, and I, I did a few songs. And let's say out of a regular DJ, that's what I am. But I would sing about maybe 15 to 25 songs scattered throughout the event. And that's how I do it. Uh, I'm also okay. an entertainer. I like to go out and entertain. <coughs> so I get the, I have a cordless mic, of course, now. So I go running around and I like to sing to the ladies and all that, you know, and I, I put on a show. You know, then we go back to the dancing. And they're all dance songs that I sing anyway. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, nobody's used to seeing that because most disc jockeys literally can't sing. Yes. I'm a real. That's why they're a DJ. Right. I'm a real <laughs> entertainer. So who became a disc jockey? Yeah. So I, why not use them both? Wow. So what kinds of stuff do you sing? Well, I sing a lot of Elvis. Okay. A wow. lot of Elvis. Wow. I was, um, you probably heard of the Elvis Festival in Collingwood. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's the biggest El Elvis Festival do in the world. Do you perform there? I did that in um, 10 years ago, 2002. Wow. Now, have you got a minute? You want to hear about this? Yeah. I, I was all excited to do this, and I figured, okay, <laughs> I sound... People say I sound like I don't try to sound like Elvis, but I, that's just the way I do. So anyway, they says, uh, "Okay, you got to look like him." So I dyed my hair black. Uh huh. Dyed it black. You could have just got a wig, you know. No, it was too hot. Okay. Got the suit. Now these, this is on in the summertime, in the middle of July. Oh, yeah. July, so they, it's that like suit's really quite hot. the getup. I put on the makeup, the whole bit, the suit. Looked in the mirror, and I go, "That's Elvis." I, I should have brought some pictures. I look exactly. I've got him at home. Exactly <laughs> like Elvis, and my wife comes up. The kids were coming up and says, "Where's Daddy?" <laughs> really? Yeah. It was that good. Wow. Now I go do the Elvis Festival. By the way, I came in 14th. I didn't win it, but I still came in 14th. I'll tell you, the most I've been so many places in my life, but I'll tell you that thing. I took my wife with me. The girls around there, the place is packed with 75,000 people at any given time. Wow. It's an entire weekend. In Collingwood. In Collingwood. Yeah. It's wow. just Elvis, Elvis. And there's not just me, there's a hundred of us running around. Yeah. And we all look the same. <laughs> how, did you, how did your wife know who you were? Well, let me tell you. I had a red outfit on. That's okay. uh, the red, uh, you know, the 70s style. Okay. Anyway, this girl comes up to me and... Um, gets my autograph, I was pinched, I was, you name it, everything happened. <laughs> everything? Every, well. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what, what happens in can Collingwood I, stays in Collingwood? <laughs> well, can I say this? Um, this is now, I don't know if I should say this, but you can bleed it out maybe, but. No. This no. is no, I better not. <laughs> you know, say it. Okay. We're just not no, going to no, no, bleed no, no, it no, out. No, 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 okay, say, right. say, 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 this, I'm standing outside, there's hundreds of people around. My wife's right beside me. And of course, they come up and they all want your autograph. But they want you in your real name because they already have the list of everybody who's doing it. So I'm Bruce Graham. It's right on there. But I look like Elvis. So anyway, this girl, she's about 36, 37 years old. She's wearing shorts, a halter top, you know, this type of thing. So she comes up to me. She wants uh, me to give her an autograph. And I says, well, that's fine. I says, do you have a piece of paper? She says, well, no. She says, but... And she did something, and you know what? You got to do what you got to do. So I signed my name. <laughs> it's on the. It's in the job description, and, and, Bruce. And, and you and had to do you, that. And what did your wife think of that? Well, uh, I said to the wife, you know, if I do it next year, you stay home. Oh. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs>
That's a joke. Boy, that's, uh, see, I didn't, I, you know, I have a friend, my guitar player in, in my band, Ken, if you're watching, he goes to that Elvis Festival okay. every year. He has a great time all the time. And, but he never told me that it was this kind of festival. Oh, Bruce. yeah. <laughs> that and more. Wow. Well, I tell you, you know, it's all an act. Uh, my wife's, I've been in it, I've been married a long time. And my wife's seen me from before I became a Mr. Entertainer to whatever. She knows what goes on. It's, I've been Part married, I'll job. never ever leave her type of thing. So yeah. my wife, Heather, she. She's great. So Heather, she, he's 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 eating crow right now. <laughs> he's got to do what he's got to do. Okay, when you're yeah, doing and now Elvis, he's eating crow, so he has a home to go home to. It's show business. It's right? part of the job. Thankfully, it's also part of the job to eat crow. <laughs> okay, Bruce. So now, now, okay. So, but you're not always Elvis. No. Right. No, and no. and you do some other stuff too. I'm assuming besides Elvis. Yeah, uh, like, sing, what's the range of uh, material that you do? I like do? to sing what I consider good songs that are singing songs. You know, I, Elvis happens to be a lot of good songs. I mean, let's face it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I sing some Neil Diamond. Uh, oh yeah, Neil Diamond is big too. Yeah, even a couple Sinatra. You know, that type wow, of thing. Wow. Okay. So, so you're pretty versatile with your voice. Yeah. It's. Um, Actually, I wouldn't mind, uh, before I leave, I wouldn't mind singing the song here. Okay. Well, why don't we do it right now? All right. Sounds now, awesome. Right now. Oh, we got to do it a cappella. But yes. That's, uh, that's, that's the true test. That's a sign true art. Yeah, exactly. 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 And you know what? This is a song now, uh, I was just mentioning my wife, Heather. A few years ago, we renewed our wedding vows in Las Vegas. Wow. I've always wanted to do that. And my wife says, well, why should I do it? I've already made the mistake once. No. <laughs> Little humor there. I know, you always have to have that conversation when yeah. you're renewing the vows. <laughs> anyway, we went there, and uh, she accepted to do it. So we picked up in the limo, and you know, you, in Vegas, they have these little chapels that hold about eight people. And anyway, this is the song that I sang to her after we had the ceremony. Wow. And it goes like this. Please don't stop. Loving me, you were born just to be on my own, mine alone. Please don't stop loving me. Your lips were made. Just to be kissed by me, kissed by me. When I'm with you, I don't know. Day from night, wrong from right, you're my world. That's all I know, I love you so, I won't let go, please don't stop loving me, you're my love, and I will be mine alone. Mine alone. There wow. it is. Thank you. No, okay. I, I especially like the background with the, the sirens. Oh, that yeah. kind of really added oh, a whole other element, I don't know what happened out there, there, but you kept it going there, Bruce, with yes. the, uh, all that distraction. <laughs> That was not a very good musician, was it, with those sirens? No, we they would be fire fired. Him, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice job. Thank Boy, you. you can really hear the Elvis there. Oh, you think so? Yes. Yeah. I don't try to sound like it just wow. comes out. I, I could hear that too. It, was, is that an Elvis song? or that is That actually is an Elvis song from a movie, and a lot of people are not uh, familiar with it. Um, wow. I've recorded a lot of uh, CDs in my life, and uh, I sell them at, uh, I should have brought them, <laughs> I sell them at my jobs. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, every time I do a job, they always go, thank you, thank you very much. You know, they always mm -hmm. imitate you know, what oh, Elvis yeah. would say. Of you know, course. I do that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have that same problem. <laughs> okay, so what are you working on these days? Uh, you know, any any special new approaches? Or any more new Collingwood music? festivals? Any more signing in peculiar places? Well, um, I, of course, we're all Toronto Blue Jays fans. Yes. I've uh, not once, not twice, but three times I sang the national anthem nice. at the Skydome for the Toronto Blue Jays. 
and that was nice because uh, you you're right out there just like it did now you know yeah and uh, you better get it right, otherwise, you know. But the thing is, they have the words up there. So oh, they do. Not? Now, well, do course. you do the American National? Yes. You, no, okay. You do you hit American that first? note? Well, sure. Hit the American first, and then you do the Canadian. Because okay. that's a tough. That's a tough song to sing. The Canadian one is not as hard to sing. The American National, because what is it? The land mm -hmm. of the free. Mm -hmm. That's pretty darn yeah. difficult. Now, when you went out there, I could, I'm just trying to imagine it here, because I, I know you mentioned you toured across the country, but I can imagine you played in a venue as large as Skydome. That was great. I what? Wait. Oh. It must what? have been a thrill to, oh, to get out there. To and get out there. Yeah. Couldn't wait. Well, I'm Mr. Music. I've, I've done it all. I, you know, there were, at the time, I'd say there was about 35,000 people there. Yeah, that's and that was so nice. And I did it three different times. Wow, yeah. nice. And you audition. That's how you get to do it. Okay. Were you? I mean, I'm just curious. Were you nervous at all? Not at you know, all. Doing Honest that, you just got God, out I, there I and. I have to uh, say this. Yeah. I, I I am at home when I'm in this environment. Yeah. Totally at home. I just can't wait. I'm hey. nervous when I'm on the 401. <laughs> Especially in a snowstorm. No, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So okay. So and and are you? Do you have any? Uh, Gigs uh, upcoming? Yes, I'm. Uh, I do a lot of private functions. I'm like doing weddings and Saturday. things like that. Well, yeah, uh, lots of weddings. All Corporate those, functions. All the weddings aren't as popular now as they used to be because mm -hmm. nobody gets married anymore. <laughs> speaking true, of weddings, true. Speaking of weddings, I did this wedding for this one gentleman whose name I won't mention. Three times, all three of his weddings, I did them. It's called repeat business. Oh mm. my God! Yeah, that, on, on the one hand, people are getting married less. On the other hand, they're getting married more. Often, there you go. More right? Often. When they do. When they do. Yes. Wow. Okay, That's so it's private times. functions, and yeah. I guess you're open to uh, people getting in touch with you yeah. and, and that so sort of thing. So you do the GTA and. Yes, but actually, I'll go anywhere, but most of it is around the GTA. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd say in my disc jockey life, I've gone to oh, uh, Aurelia, Midland, uh, London, uh, Windsor. You know that type of thing, but ninety percent of it around the greater GTA, we'll say. And do you do fundraisers and things like that I too? I do everything. Yeah, okay. absolutely okay. everything. Wow. Okay. And do you have a website where? You know what? I used to have a website, and it's under construction. Okay. Damn, okay. Man, Are you I on did. Facebook or anything no, like that? No, I'm. Uh, I'm not very uh, high tech. Unfortunately, I should be, but can people email you? Yes, they can definitely email me at Bruce Graham at Rogers dot com. Okay. Are there any online resources or other uh, property, you know, What is your anything? website when it is back up so people well, can check Bruce it out? Well, it's BruceGrahamDJ.com. Okay, so okay, if they were to go good. there right now, what would it say, under construction? They would they would see all kinds of, uh, all you got to do is put Bruce Graham DJ, and I'm up on the Yahoo's and everything. Okay. I'm yeah. all over the place. Okay, okay. All over the place. You can't help but see me. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you, Do we get to see you and Elvis look alike? We you know, it's funny you would mention that. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Really? I was, that's three days of doing the Elvis Festival. The first day and a half were very flattering. But I'll tell you, they won't leave you alone. Yeah. Honest to God, I, you know, they had for the us Elvises, they have places, you know, where you can go to the bathroom and get a, Greek, a drink of Coke or something like that to get away from people. Yeah. I mean, it's very fly, but you go out there, they're they, all so over do you. people really think you're Elvis? That's they, what honest I, to God, they really think, and you know, when you think about, say, Elvis, that's how his life went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why he uh, surrounded Became himself a recluse. with his own friends yeah. and everything else. You have, and at the end of the, I was, I was had enough. I'll tell you this, at the end, this is, this is the awards night. Mm -hmm. I shaved off the sideburns and everything else, and I put on my regular clothes. I still had the black hair, of course. And I walked out with my wife, and we went into the, uh, they have a big auditorium there to get the awards and all that with everybody. And as I'm walking across the street, hey, Elvis! And somebody took my picture and another autograph again. I was still, even though I looked so-called normal, mm -hmm. they still thought it was Elvis. Wow. I, when I finally left the place, again, it's very flattering, I could finally relax. And I think we went to um, a few days. We, it was part of our, my deal. We're going to spend a few days somewhere just to relax. And boy, uh, did I ever relax. I was exhausted. Can you imagine? That, and Elvis wow. had to deal with that. He couldn't Every get day. away from that, Every right? Day. Wow. Yeah. You don't know that until you do it. Like I say, it's flattering at the beginning, but after a while... It wears you down. It really, really wears you down. So after that, I said, I'm not going to do it next year. And they kept calling me and calling me, and I said, you know, I'll just do my own thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Wow. All right. Well, wow. Bruce, it's been great to have you on the Thank show. Thank you for sharing Great to have this conversation. So I feel fun. like we've been on a trip through through Musical time history. and yeah. a trip across Canada, yeah. and uh, wow. and it's just great to have done this today. And we'll so. stay in touch. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so very thanks much. Thanks for coming and good in. Luck. Thank you. Okay, wow. and of course, so people can get fun. Bruce Graham at Rogers.com. What a nice way to end the show. Yeah. That was a really nice journey. It was a great, great show today. So. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Adam. Sandra. Okay, we better give Bruce a high five, too. High there five. you go, Bruce. Thank, hey. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back Tuesday for more Liquid Lunch right here on thatchannel.com. We'll see you then. Yeah. I go to the